Hey everybody, hope you're having the best day of your life. And if you woke up in America this morning, congratulations, you are the 1% of all time. Do not allow these crazy left-wing politicians to convince you that you are a victim when you woke up in a place that everybody in the world wants to be at. All right, think about this. You woke up this morning with freedom and liberty. If America is a place where institutionalized racism reigns and black people are being hunted in the streets daily, why is it that people wanna come here from all over the world? Why is it that people are willing to pay tens of thousands of dollars to become American citizens? Think about that. Why is it that people come here from Africa, from the Middle East, from Central and South America, from Mexico, from the Philippines, all over the world they all come to america if america's so bad then why is it everybody wants to be in america all right you woke up with that freedom and that liberty this morning you are not a victim we do not live in a perfect world there will always be people out there trying to resist you and trying to stop you from being successful but don't buy into it believe in yourself work super hard and get after it because you are in a place that very few people have ever, ever been able to experience what you woke up with this morning. Freedom and liberty and the economic, social, and educational opportunities that come with that. So enjoy and prepare yourself and raise a family and enjoy this beautiful place known as the United States of America. All right, 1% of all time, that's you if you woke up in America this morning. Today, I'm doing a completely different kind of video. Yesterday, about nine o'clock, my worlds my worlds collided. Anybody who knows me knows that I, first of all, I love God number one, my wife number two, my children right after my wife, all right? And after that, it's up for grabs. It's history, politics. Politics gets a bad rap, but in, to my, in my mind, politics is super important. History and politics. And then there's retaining walls. This is how I make my living. I make my living by building retaining walls. I've been doing this my entire adult life. I, my tallest walls are 35 foot tall, 34 foot tall. My longest walls are 5,863 linear foot. I've built walls in lakes and creeks and every kind of situation you could imagine. I built outdoor amphitheaters. I built everything, all right? Yesterday I get the news uh, that at nine o'clock yesterday morning, this 40 plus foot tall retaining wall was blew out in Arnold, Missouri. This wall was built by um, one of my competitors who's dominated the commercial market in St. Louis for the last 20 years. They do good work, um, and so it's very unusual. This wall blew out, total failure. The wall itself was constructed by a professional company who has a good reputation. Uh, the engineer is a great engineer who's been doing this stuff forever. And the um, the block itself is a great product. I've used this product myself in every kind of application and I've never had a wall fail, all right? So the block itself is a great product. The engineering, if it's the engineer, I'm almost certain it was that did this, did a really good job. I saw the geogrids because they're right there to see. Where do you see this? video, by the way, you're going to be blown away. I get up nice and close and personal with this 40 foot tall failing retaining wall. And it is going to blow your mind when you see what I'm going to show you. Okay. I'm giving you my professional analysis. I've installed over a million square foot of wall in my lifetime. I've been there and done that in every situation. And what you're going to hear from me today is my professional analysis of what happened as I walk up on this wall for the very first time. I'm literally thinking out loud in my head on the video and I'm telling you what I'm seeing and what I believe happened and what I believe should happen uh, before this is all said and done. So let's get into this video today. You guys are going to be really, really blown away when you see the size of this wall and I'm right underneath it. I've got 85 pound blocks uh, hanging over my head. You're going to be shocked when you see this, but it's worth it. I'm a freak about these kind of things. I absolutely love retain walls. This is how I feed my family. This is what I do. This is what I do. So enjoy my analysis. Enjoy the crazy video. And if you're one of those people who are below this retaining wall, man, I, I imagine you guys are terrified, but watch my video. And I think you'll have some, um, you know, it might give you some hope. So have a great day, everybody. Enjoy this video. And please, if you like what I'm doing here, please like, 
comment and share, share, share my videos and please subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much. God bless you guys and enjoy this crazy wall that got blown out yesterday morning. All right, here I am in Arnold, Missouri on the spot where this big bad wall which I saw actually, I watched this wall as it was being constructed. And, you know, honestly, I wasn't very impressed with the aesthetics. The company that did it is a reputable company here in St. Louis. They've dominated the uh, commercial retaining wall market for uh, almost two decades now. And I'm just curious as to what the heck is all that stuff in the vertical connection points between these blocks. See how there is the type of block this is. This is a Rockwood eight inch straight face natural classic block. But there again, that is a great block. I've got blocked, I've got walls 35 foot tall, 34 foot tall, 5,863 linear foot built out of this material and uh, with no problems at all. Oh my. Gosh, that whole section there is about ready to come out. Wow. That whole entire section right there is about to come out. And whatever dynamic forces worked on this to make that do that, ripped the geo grid straight out of the face of the wall. Oh, this is fascinating to me. I've been building walls my whole entire adult life. Whoa. I've got walls 35 foot tall, 34 foot tall, 5,000 linear foot, walls in creeks, lakes, every situation. The interesting thing about this was whatever blew it, I would have loved to have seen this wall prior to its blowing out. They, they, whatever blew this wall out, it was not raining, uh, which is usually the case and probably a good thing because if it was hydrostatic pressure that would have blown this wall out, Ooh, maybe it was hydrostatic pressure. Look at that. Wow. Some very, very interesting dynamics going on here. Holy smoke. The geogrids have been ripped out of the face of the wall. This is what it looks like down below. Each one of these stones weigh 85 pounds. When they're core filled, they weigh 87 pounds. They're eight inches tall, 18 inches long, and a foot deep. They have a, ooh, that's my first question. Is this built with a setback to it? Dang, this is dangerous stuff here, brother. Ooh, they had these blocks all glued on this radius. Interesting. Man, look at the face of those geogrids just ripped out of the wall. The force that did that was incredible. It's so easy for me to stand down under this wall like this and not realize that each one of these stones is 85 pounds. If they hit me, they will kill me. Oh my gosh. The blocks look like they're actually broken. The face of the blocks are actually broken, sheared, pulled apart. Look at that. Wow. I am so interested in what my engineer will have to say about this. I'm sure he won't want to say it publicly. Oh my gosh. We had, just for the record, uh, yeah. Wow. This was a commercial wall done with a Rockwood 8 inch classic straight face natural. These blocks are literally just shattered. That's the part that fascinates me right there is to see how those blocks are cracked and broken and shattered and ripped out of the face of the geo grids. And there's so much grid. I, I'm counting, I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven layers of geo grid, probably eight going to that row right there. And so I got eight rows, eight layers of geo grid in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Looks like 34 rows. So basically about every three rows, it's just a classic every three rows kind of scenario here. I would have thought that this wall would have had way more geogrid in it than that. Uh, the wall that I have at Gravois Bluffs that I built that's 35 foot tall has 20 foot geogrids in it, literally 20 foot geogrids in it. Um, every row for the first 15 rows 
and then after that it goes to us every three rows well here's part of the problem here you see this minus rock used and not clean rock which you know in a wall this size clean rock is really not oh man there's still stuff falling out of there and a wall this size clean rock is not really uh, financially practical what the heck is going on here? All these stress cracks in this wall. And it actually has a setback to it. So that's fascinating to me. They're actually, this wall has a one inch setback per eight inch rise. So the way that that works, is called a hinge. And the way that that works is these walls are 12 inches deep. These blocks are 12 inches deep. Each row sets back one inch. And so that, Doing, so, doing that allows every 13th row to be taking direct bearing load off of the 13th row below it, if that makes sense. So it sets back one inch every row. So every 13th row, you're taking the direct load off of the blocks 13 rows below it. There's still a load there, but it's not a direct. Oh, this is a fascinating situation. So apparently you could see that they've been having problems with the box cracking, which completely blows me away since this is not a vertical wall. Usually you do not see stress cracks like this in a wall when it's not vertical. And I'm seeing these stress cracks going all the way up. So this is fascinating to me. Do you see the stress cracks in this wall? The stress cracks in this wall, ooh, that is it. They're gonna be doing, they're gonna be doing a test on the block. For sure, I guarantee you there's going to be some major, major testing going on on this particular wall. They're going to be doing tests on the blocks. They're going to be checking out all the engineering. This is, a, whew, this is a very, very bad situation here, folks. And the thing that's fascinating me is it's common to see stress cracks around 20 foot tall. It's common to see stress cracks in a, in a wall like this. At about the 20 foot tall mark when you go vertical when you go vertical but in a situation like this man this wall is in bad shape man that, that whole section is going to come out but when you go when a, in a wall like this you just don't get that like where you have a setback to when you have a setback like this in the wall, you usually do not get stress cracks at 20 foot. What's fascinating me about this though, is I'm actually seeing stress cracks and breaks in the blocks way higher than 20 foot. I'm seeing stress cracks and breaks in these blocks, like literally, it looks like 10 foot down from what I can identify on my camera here. Uh, this is fascinating. These stones are Oh, man, what the heck material did they try to glue oh they were using like a rubber they're using some kind of a rubber bonding agent to try to hold these blocks together what the heck is that i've never seen anything like it honestly never seen anything like it this wall was obviously having some kind of a oh yeah this wall has been having problems for a while it looks like and nobody was just nobody was talking about it whoa man this whole section i'm under right now is totally not secure that that whole section oh, look at these stress cracks going up this wall i'm fascinated by this this is about a 40 foot tall wall which is no problem look at that all the geogrid in that whole section right there has been ripped out of the out of the face of the wall wow engineering failures are not ever one thing engineering failure well i mean i can't say never almost never one thing engineering failures and retaining walls are almost always a multiplication of things that actually end up uh, multiplying beyond the uh, apparent surface importance yeah look at this they they were they had some kind of tags here. They were actually monitoring this wall's movement. Looks to me like they had some kind of monitors on this, maybe to even monitor this wall's movement. Look at this, wow, man, look at this. Oh my gosh, this is insanity, folks. This is insanity.
I've been building walls my entire adult life. Sorry about the, vi the, the video footage of this wall. Looks like they busted out. Only, only casualty here so far was this piece of fence busted out. But this material that they're putting on the, in this wall tells me this wall has had problems for a while. And uh, we just didn't know it until one morning, about nine o'clock, I heard, boom, this thing blew out uh, a couple days ago. Actually, it was either yesterday. I think it was yesterday, actually. Might have been the day before. I think it was yesterday. Wow. <clears throat> wow. I am a just a retaining wall enthusiast. I'm a freak on these kind of things. And this totally just blows my mind. So here we are. This one's gonna be a this one's gonna be one for the for the record. This is going to be fascinating to see how all this plays out. But retaining walls are remarkably reliable when they are done correctly. And it will be I will be fascinated to hear why the engineers say this wall blew out. I could see from the outside of the from the outside face of the blocks that they've been treating this wall. They've been trying to put uh, band aids on it for some time uh, in this corner here. And man, oh man, oh man! Wow. And the thing that fascinates me about this is it was not even raining when this wall blew out. It was dry. So here we are. Let's go up top and check out what we got up there if I can get up top. God is good. I'm thankful nobody got hurt. And man, I'll tell you what, this is this is probably the most dangerous thing I'll do all day long. Being below that wall was very, very dangerous. My wife would probably want to kill me for it, but I just love this kind of stuff. And uh, well, I don't love this kind of stuff. I actually hate seeing this kind of stuff, but I love trying to understand failures like this. There's no reason for it really, honestly, that I could see other than I'm seeing they were obviously having cracks in the block. So anyway, wow. And there was a minus rock behind it, which I've got walls 35 foot, 34 foot tall, respectively with minus rock behind them and they're fine. And uh, one of them was installed 20 years ago and the other one was installed uh, about 15 years ago. So this one was installed about six years ago, I think if I'm not mistaken. Maybe five or six at the most. I don't. It might have even been that. It might have been four or five years. It's not a very old wall. Should not have happened. Wow. Well, a lot of people right now having a really bad day because you know the people who engineered it, the people who built it, and you know the manufacturers. I feel sorry for all of them. Uh, I'm thankful nobody got hurt here. Just uh, remember remember them in your prayers man because this is some somebody's going to be paying a lot of money for this and this whole wall is going to have to be literally taken all the way back down and rebuilt and uh wow so gonna be taken back down and rebuilt so god is good here i am on uh july 30th 2020 in arnold missouri at the site of one of the biggest retaining wall failures uh, in recent history.